Christmas in Corpus. As a stamp collector, I was always buying extra unused stamps from the post office to get a really nice copy for my collection. As a result, I had lots of stamps. I couldn't use them all. I sold a lot at work. But then at Christmas, I would give the grown-ups a envelope full of stamps. So this particular Christmas, we were going around and opening up the envelopes, and Donna had just moved out into her own place. So this was the first Christmas that I prepared an envelope full of stamps for Donna. When it came to her, she opened it up and she shrieked, Oh, I feel like an adult now. The next story is kumquats. I love kumquats. And at the house on Carmel Parkway, Parkway where Carolyn Leroy lived, there was a kumquat tree in their backyard. And while we were down there for Christmas, three or four times a day, I would go out and pick myself some kumquats and eat them. When I was not able to go down to Corpus, Carol, in the goodness of her heart, would send me a package of kumquats for me to have on Christmas. And I enjoyed that every time that she did that. The next story I remember is that mom had been in a play or directed a play at her church and she had a dragon outfit. And when she came down to Corpus for that Christmas, I was there with my kids. And when they saw the dragon costume, they put that on and they were filming all kinds of videos with that dragon suit. Well, toward the end of the day, it was about the time Leroy came home from work and I heard him pull up in the driveway. I thought, okay, this will be fun. And I shouted to someone, I oh, was it you, Scott? Good to put on the uh, dragon outfit? Probably. Okay. Somebody put on the outfit and go greet Leroy at the door with your hands outstretched like this. Well, he had not seen any of us arrive. This would be the first day that he saw us all there. So when he walked in the door, there was the dragon with his arms outstretched like that. Leroy took one look at the dragon and very quickly, he looked over at Carol and said, Honey, I see your relatives are here. <laughs> and that's my, some of my favorite memories of Corpus. Hey, Dan and Shannon, I've had so many wonderful memories with us getting together as a family and either Galveston or in Corpus Christi for Christmas and Thanksgiving. So it's really hard to nail it down to one favorite memory. But I wanted to share with you several memories that pop to mind, pop in mind when I think about our, our time together growing up in, in these holidays. Uh, one of them was uh, Christmas in Galveston, and I just remember a particular, particular sweet little voice and his rendition of Achy Breaky Heart filling the house and making making us all smile. And another time in Galveston, I remember us sitting around in a corner, I mean, in a circle, and we're all opening a gift one by one. I think Ray must have been the first one to start. And I think he was surprised that he opened up in grandmother and granddaddy's house, opened up this beautiful leather jacket, and he's looking at it in awe on the front of it. And what he didn't see that the rest of us saw is this giant slash right down the middle <laughs> uh, in a diagonal. And we all were just laughing. We're like, turn it around until Ray saw it. And then the rest of us were waiting in anticipation of what are we going to open next from the Kmart dumpster special. And then, of course, usually growing up at Christmases, we'd all wonder if we should eat the hard candy or not, especially if granddaddy put it in the jars or, you know, don't eat that. Um, and of course, every single holiday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Galveston, Corpus, wherever we were, um, the house was always filled with the joyful and infectious laughter of your mom and of Carol. And I remember all of those get togethers with her laughter and it's very special to, to think back on. And um, then, you know, there was the, this one Christmas in uh, Corpus Christi, and this one I remember a lot. And we're all just opening our presents at the same time and talking over one another. And, you know, the puns are flying one over after the other. And Dad, Granddaddy is sitting in the corner, kind of in his big recliner chair, being super quiet until he was opening a present of his. And then he belted out from nowhere. Ah! 
And we all looked at him and just laughed and just held. And where did that come from? He opened the original version of a Tarzan video. And then he went back to being quiet the rest of the time. And that just, <laughs> just made me howl as a kid. I just love that. And I have to say, um, something really special to me that I want you to know specifically, Dan, is that, you know, there, I remember some sometimes if I felt alone or left out or, um, you know, just sad, I would go off by myself and you sought me out and made me feel better. You cheered me up and you made me feel wanted to be around. And I wanted to thank you so much for that and how much that meant to me. And excuse me, but that... That meant a lot to me, Dan, and I really appreciate that. I'm sending you a virtual hug <laughs> to you and Shannon, and Merry Christmas, Dan, Shannon, Ryan, and Randy. I love you all. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas from beautiful Colorado. We just had all the snow melt, so we're not quite the winter wonderland we were a few days ago, but it certainly is bright out. Um, Merry Christmas, you guys. Some of the best memories, the very best memories I've ever had have been Christmas and Thanksgiving in uh, Corpus and in Galveston. Uh, everyone here on this tape has already kind of uh, uh, said all the things that we all all typically remember, the, the, the dumpster food, the trips behind Walmart, uh, the trips to the, uh, the, uh, the, the aquarium that was there when we were younger and that was still available, playing on the beach. All those things, of course, are full of uh, wonderful, wonderful memories. Uh, so I'm not going to include those. I'm not going to talk about some of the, the crazy things, the crazy times we did. Uh, but um, the thing that I most remember and the thing that I love most about our trips to Corpus and to Galveston is I knew that it was going to be a week where um, there was going to be no judgment. It was going to be safe. There weren't going to be arguments or people having the dysfunctional family problems that a lot of our friends and people that we know have on these types of holidays. I knew that we were going to have a week of laughter and fun times and getting together and just loving each other and being with each other. That was the important thing, that we were going to have a week of memories that we will uh, never forget. And we're talking about them today. We are going to have a week where we came together as one uh, in his name, in our name. We had the best of times. We cared about each other and loved each other no matter what. And I remember many times coming uh, to a Christmas or a Thanksgiving where I was particularly hurting for one reason or another. And um, it was made right and I felt good and I left that week um, uh, rejoyed and renewed and re-empowered. Uh, I think Ray and I might be battling for the record of who brought the most girlfriends and wives to Christmas and Thanksgiving. And I think I might have that record. I'm not sure, Ray, I'll fight you over it. But um, <laughs> I always knew that, yes, these people uh, who I was bringing, these strangers, maybe new people to the family, were going to get quite a uh, experience to see the uh, underbelly of the Howards but I also knew that they would leave feeling like they had a family. And I knew that our family would bring them in and make them one of us. And uh, to this day, I think that's still very true of those people that have come from the outside, the, the, uh, 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 the, the outlaws, as we call them. And they're still very much a uh, part, uh, as big a part of our family as anyone else. Uh, again, it's a week that uh, I look forward to every time I know it's coming up. And I know that it's going to be safe and wonderful and full of blessings and full of tremendous memories. Merry Christmas, everyone. I love you. One of my fondest Christmas memories is sitting around the Christmas tree and opening the various multiple packages that granddaddy and grandmother would prepare for us, some of which we knew had come from uh, behind Kmart. And this continued on even when we weren't visiting, um, even into when I had some young children in our household. I can remember two years in a row getting a package um, from grandmother and granddaddy that came in. And one of these packages had in it several packages of Power Rangers underwear from girls. So it was the pink and green version of the Power Rangers that was on my underwear. 
So we laughed about it at the time, but it was also happened to be a time where we were, I was in graduate school and we didn't mind giving our children Power Rangers underwear as pretty much their only underwear. So Olivia wore the underwear and then they got passed on to Emma who wore the underwear and they got passed on to Willa who wore the underwear and I just wanted to say, that's a very fond memory. Thank you, Grandmother and Granddad. <laughs> okay, one of my earliest memories of Texas is uh, being welcomed into the club for those who had married into this crazy clan. And I appreciated the camaraderie in that group. Um, and also being warned about the expired milk and refrigerator. Um, and then um, another fond memory is uh, Granddad Coward and uh, his love of gardening and how good he was and just seeing his enjoyment in uh, doing that. One of my favorite memories is my first Christmas in Galveston. I think I was eight years old and I got to stay up really late playing parkour with Daddy and Uncle Ray and some siblings around the table in the back uh, porch room. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> Willa? Uh, yeah, speaking of the gardening, I loved wandering around the lemon and lime trees in the backyard, and that was just a place of mystery and awesomeness. <laughs> yeah, and a big deal for a young child to yeah. see all that stuff. Yeah, that I didn't know you could. In West Virginia, right? Yeah, I didn't know you could own lemon and lime trees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And to round this out, I did develop a top 10 list because it was very hard for me to come up with my most fond memories. So starting at number 10, fond memories of, of traveling to Galveston and Corpus. Number 10, that a Colorado kid got to go to the beach and the aquarium and the Strand and SeaWorld and all those neat places. Number nine, getting to play on my first Macintosh computer. How cool was that? Number eight, actually getting to go dumpster diving with my grandfather. Number seven, my Aunt Carol's laugh. You can do it. <laughs> Number six, all the snappy repartee and puns. Number five, The Amho business meetings. <laughs> Number four, getting to see my awesome cousins. Number three, getting to see my awesome aunts and uncles. Number two, all the great Howard togetherness. And number one, fond memory, of traveling to Galveston was the E. coli mystery candy bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and so from all of us to you, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! Blurry, I can't tell. Hello there, memories of Galveston and Corpus. Um, She's Janet and I'm Aaron. Yeah, I'm Janet, he's Aaron. <laughs> um, I always remember the poker games with pennies, that was always fun. Leroy was hilarious when we did that. Um, and then when you were underage from Amster, you would get cash. But when you matured enough, you would get stamps. Everybody got stamps when they were adults from Amster. That was fun too. Uh, White Elephant. Um, games long time back I remember there was a smoking section <laughs> in the Galveston house for, for Christmas long before everybody quit um, that's about all I can remember at the moment except that it was always lots of fun and lots of hilarious things and oh tramp going on the trampoline in the neighbor's yard uh, making videos, lots of, all sorts of lots of fun, different things. Anyway, that's what I remember. Oh, let's see. I remember the first time I went to Galveston. It was on Grandma's 
80th birthday, right? Is mm -hmm. that what it was? In the tiny room they stuck us in because there were so many family members there. But the biggest thing I remember besides the party was the giant bucket of banana pudding. Banana, right? Yeah, banana, banana pudding with vanilla wafers. And of, yeah, and of course the white elephant stuff we did and everybody getting together. And Corpus, the last time we were there, of course, was when you guys gave us the piano and sold it so that we could get Nicholas. But that's about all I remember. I, there's probably more I remember, but that's it for this short video. Yep. Right. Merry Christmas. Merry ho, Christmas. ho, ho. Bye. Hey, Howard. Welcome to Favorite Christmas Memories from Galveston and Corpus 2020. So when I think of my favorite Christmas memories, or favorite memories from Corpus, Galveston, I like to think of this uh, tri-annual whaling expedition that we uh, were so fond of going on. I was so happy on this trip that I went ahead and I took a little time and effort and energy and I went ahead and had this picture colorized. So I decided I needed to know the details of that day as much as possible. So I'd like you all to see a colorized photo. I think it came out pretty good. I was so impressed with the results. So I also went ahead and did it in blue. Kind of already knew how to do it. But let's go ahead and fast forward a few years. And you can tell the date as we go through by looking at the, the mutton chops here uh, on uh, Amsterdam K. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, this is Mary's biological parents over here on the right. And I have no idea who this woman is in the middle. But she looks pretty important. Uh, I mean, this is one of the few pictures where a hamster is smiling. When I look at this picture, I like to think that Scott is saying, Hey Bruce, get off my foot. Ah, the very famous Roboto scene by Mary. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Feel free to go ahead and dub that music in. Apparently, she was very big in horticultural circles. This is one of her prized petunias. I've never seen them that big. Here we have Virginia and Amster in the 60s. I'm told it was a much different time back then. This was apparently their Christmas attire. We would often wear matching outfits throughout the year for different events. Somehow, Ray got a hold of one of them. This is, of course, before... Carol had her eye, uh, red eye reduction surgery. The Smithsonian recently reached out to me and asked me to donate this couch to them. I like to imagine that Virginia is saying, crap, I forgot to go behind Kmart on the way home from work. Ah yes, the world's first wristwatch. Before this, people would drag grandfather clocks around. But let's go ahead and get down to the heart of the matter. Favorite memories from Christmas in Galveston, or Corpus. I mean, when you ask me to limit myself, you have to kind of define those terms. Is Christmas Eve okay? New Year's Day? I mean, certainly there's some fluctuation in the days allowed. How about location? Ocean, outside of St. Louis, Houston, Kentucky? I like to think some of my favorite Christmas memories in Galveston actually occurred in Kentucky during summer. Maybe we'll save that for another time. But as I think about it, I think my favorite parts to all those gatherings wasn't the poker, smoking in the back patio, probably wasn't the daily trips to Kmart. I think I was 10 before I realized Kmart had a front door. It wasn't the 2,000 mugs hanging on the wall that we decided to wash one day, along with Granddaddy. He helped. We didn't. Probably wasn't seeing Red walking around unannounced for all the white elephant presents we got to bring home. And I think my favorite memory was the inclusion I felt when we were there. I don't know how they did it, but Amster and Virginia created a family that genuinely liked to be together for gatherings of six days or less. I mean, how many times can we hear about the big toe? How many times can we eat banana pudding? 
How many times do we have to eat oranges and kumquats out of the tree in the backyard? Okay, apparently that number is actually pretty high. I've tried to duplicate that atmosphere in my house with varying levels of success. Things I know it needs as part of the model is a grand piano, black, or black and white, and black and white, and white and black, and white and black. Lots of music and singing. Apparently being, key, being in key is not required. C, humility. It's been said that we are some of the most humble people we know. Five, consistent furniture. Nothing ruins a family gathering like a brand new Barca lounger. Six, love. Seven, more love. Eight, treating everyone like family, even if you just met them. Nine, food, buffet styles preferred. I hop, always a pleaser. 10, and above all else, humor. So I'll share my favorite memories. I'm sure I'll get some of the details. One time, Dad and I went down and uh, helped Dan and Leroy work on uh, one of the cars they were fixing up to sell so that they could uh, buy very needed racing equipment, car parts. And um, I remember being, I don't know, maybe eight or 10 at the time. Um, Dan would ask me to go get parts from the toolbox and I was really excited to help out and had no idea what he was looking for. He'd come over, showed it to me and say, if it was a snake, it would have bit you or something like that. Um, but at the end of the day, after we had, you know, we'd taken all the, the, the chairs out of the car, put down new floorboards, new carpet, um, you know, I, I felt kind of included as being part of his, uh, his project. And then for whatever reason, we had a, uh, we had one fewer drivers than we needed to move the cars. And, uh, Leroy ended up giving me his car to drive across the bay. So I guess I couldn't have been eight or 10, must have at least been 12. Um, but uh, I felt that uh, Leroy and Dan and the family kind of accepted me as one of their own. And uh, um, it was just a good memory. All right, one last tidbit. One, uh, one time when we got to Galveston, within five minutes of walking in the door, Granddaddy said, come on, Michael, I'm going to shopping. And this is my you know, grandfather, hamster impression. So shopping, I wasn't sure what that meant. We're going behind Kmart, you know. I mean, I love me some broken transformers and comic books with no covers. Now we we're going to go get dinner at a grocery store. Um, and I, we were walking through the aisles. I noticed he was picking up two of everything. I'm like, oh, well, he just knows exactly what we need. But we get to the checkout counter and he, he hands me half of the food and a stack of coupons, most of which said one per customer. So he wasn't really excited to see me when I showed up at his house after not seeing him. He just needed another buyer for the store. But as we were walking out the store, I can't remember the exact conversation. He ran into someone that he knew or um, had worked with. Um, but Granddaddy spotted him some money without even thinking about it. Probably more money than we had just saved. And that is what I think about when I think about my family. No matter where we are, what we're doing, we're ready to save a few bucks by splitting up coupons. Oh, no. uh, we're willing to make sacrifices in our own lives so that others can benefit. So that others can feel the love from our heart. It brings us joy to see that joy in others. Thank you all for going down memory lane. Have a Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Dan and Shannon, hi. We're so glad we get to talk to you and tell you about some of our memories in Corpus Christi and Galveston and for Thanksgiving and Christmas. We, uh, I especially remember 
being down in the gully in front of your mom and dad's house and one winter we would throw snowballs and the next winter we were playing football and then another time we went to the beach and we couldn't it was too cold and another time we went to the beach and at Christmas and it was just delightful and one time I buried my knee self into the up to my knees and Jill came over and she could lean over on top of me because she was so much taller. <laughs> that was fun. All the times we had playing penny poker and uh, getting to see everybody and sharing so much. Uh, it was great times. Very good. Very good. And um, Mary remembers some things in Corpus Christi about Thanksgiving and Louis, Uncle Louis. Oh yeah, when he he cooked the Thanksgiving dinner for us and brought it over. Grab that picture over there. And I think this is this picture is from one of those times. It it was two thousand and four and the only reason I know that it's cause Abby was a baby and that's the year she was born. But it looks like everybody's in the picture. Yep. So we're hoping you guys have a great Christmas. And a happy new year. And uh, get over all this COVID pandemic uh, hibernation. And uh, able to enjoy the outdoors and the indoors and everything else again. Sounds great. And wish you the best, and I hope you and your family have a good holiday together. I guess a lot of families aren't going to be together because of COVID, but we have the memories of when all of us were together. Right. And uh, so we'll say bye, but just wanted to make sure you knew we were thinking of you. I think I've got it going. So the uh, <coughs> powers that be <laughs> wanted me to, uh, all of us actually, to try to remember something from Christmas or Thanksgiving when we were together that stood out or was a fond memory. But I really couldn't think of anything specific. So what I'm thinking is I'm looking back at the whole thing you know when I first met you Dan I was 10 years old and suddenly I wasn't the youngest person in the family anymore it was kind of a relief but that being said I was also the closest in age to you from just about everybody so that kind of bonded us I think and it was a good bond I was always too young to hang with the adults and <clears throat> so <clears throat> thank God you guys were came along <laughs> but <clears throat> um, you know growing up together is what we did really um, all kinds of cool stuff that you know when we would get together in Galveston and Corpus and you guys as kids, uh, me being a rebel teenager, um, all those crazy things. And the time that you showed up to my house in Lamarck wearing the same t-shirt, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, and then um, just, you know, the rest of the times together were always so special. Uh, the, the birthdays, the weddings, the Christmas and Thanksgiving and I think some of the most special stuff was doing stuff that we didn't want the adults to find out about <laughs> and that was always good times so anyway I just wanted to say uh, how important you are to my life and um, that I love you dearly bye hey dad my favorite memory 
of Galveston is us all going to Moody Gardens together. That was a really great time. Love you. Hi, Dan. Merry Christmas. As all of our Christmases were special in Galveston, I have one particular one that stands out to me. It was the time grandmother and granddaddy played the hot cold game. And I didn't know what it was, but we caught on pretty fast, the hot cold, hot cold, and sometimes we were warm. And then once we found our presents, they were suitcases. Yours was blue, mine was green. And I just, that just stands out to me when I think about Christmas in Galveston was that particular one. But anyway, we love you, Dan. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas and um, a happy new year. My favorite memory of Christmas is the first Christmas we went to Galveston and played the white elephant. I had never played the white elephant before and it really kind of freaked me out. But I still don't understand how we always ended up with soap on a rope. I'm sure Dan thought that one out. Anyway, any holiday with all of the Howards together and the Schumanns together was always very special to me, whether it was in Corpus or whether it was in Galveston. I'm just so grateful that you picked me to be part of your family. Merry Christmas.